Hi guys and welcome to this tutorial where we're going to be solving a two-part problem on projectile motion. Okay, so here's a question. So a boy plays a game at a fairground. He needs to throw a ball through a hole in a vertical target to win a prize. The motion of the ball is modeled as a particle moving freely under gravity. The ball moves in a vertical plane which is perpendicular to the plane of the target. The boy throws the ball horizontally at the same height as the hole with a speed of 10 meters per second. It hits the target at a point 20 centimeters below the hole. Find the horizontal distance from the point where the ball was thrown to the target. Okay, so there's a boy that tries to throw this ball at a target, which is this hole that's at the same level as the ball. And since we've been told that the motion of the ball is modeled as a particle moving freely under gravity, we can model this ball as a particle in projectile motion. Now, since we've been told that the boy throws the ball horizontally with a speed of 10 meters per second, we can add to this diagram an initial velocity vector of 10 meters per second, which is a horizontal vector that goes in the direction of motion of the particle. Now, since we've been told to use the acceleration due to gravity G is equal to 10 meters per second per second, we're just going to mark that on the diagram. And this vector is typically marked with two arrows to show that the acceleration due to gravity is acting downwards on the particle. So we've also been told that it hits the target at a point 20 centimeters below the hole. In other words, this distance here is equal to 20 centimeters. Now when working with quantities in mechanics, it's important to convert all quantities into SI units. So instead of writing 20 centimeters here, we're going to write 0 0.2 meters, which is the equivalent SI unit for 20 centimeters, okay? So we've been asked to find the horizontal distance from the point where the ball was thrown to the target. So effectively, we've been asked to find the distance between this point, which is the initial point of projection, and this hole, which is the target. Now, since the particle ends up directly beneath the target, well, we can find the horizontal distance by finding out this distance, which is the range of the path of motion. Now, since we're looking at the range, well, it makes sense to consider the horizontal motion. So we'll use this notation, which means resolving horizontally. And the arrow to the right just means that we're going to take the rightwards direction to be positive and the leftwards direction to be negative. Now, in general, you can choose which direction do you like to be positive, but it always makes it easier to choose the direction of initial projection to be positive, okay? Now, when considering horizontal motion, the equation we should use is displacement is equal to velocity times time, or S equals to UT. In projectile questions, this is the only equation for horizontal motion, and that's because there's no acceleration in a horizontal sense of motion. So in order to use this equation to find the horizontal distance, which we've called S, we need the initial horizontal velocity, which we've called U, and the time of flight, T. From the diagram, we can see that the initial horizontal velocity is this 10 meters per second. However, we don't know the time of flight. But from previous tutorials, you should now know that the time of flight is the same in horizontal motion and vertical motion so let's consider resolving the motion of this particle in the vertical direction where we take upwards to be positive and downwards to be negative and we can find out the components of vertical motion by considering our system of SUVA equations so if we know some of these vectors then perhaps we can build up a SUVA equation to find the value of t now notice that the path of this particle in a vertical sense would go straight down until it reaches a point that's 0 0.2 meters below the hole. And therefore the vertical displacement at this point is equal to negative 0 0.2 meters. Now, since we're told that the boy throws the ball horizontally, well, that means that there is no component of initial velocity in the vertical direction. And therefore U 
is equal to zero. Now, since the acceleration due to gravity is acting downwards on the particle, since we took upwards to be positive, the acceleration is equal to negative 10 meters per second per second. And whenever you're building a SUVAT equation and you have three of the quantities, well, it means that you can use those to find the other unknown quantities in a SUVAT equation. Now, since we want to find t, we'll use the equation s is equal to ut plus half a t squared to find the time of flight of this particle. So using equation 2 and substituting these values, we get negative 0.2 is equal to 0 times t plus half times negative 10 times t squared. And therefore, we get negative 0.2 is equal to negative 5t squared, 0 times t is equal to 0, and negative 10 over 2 is negative 5. If we divide both sides by negative 5, we get that t squared is equal to 0 0.04, and taking the square root of both sides, we get that t is equal to 0 0.2 seconds, okay? Now, of course, the square root of 0 0.04 is plus or minus 0 0.2. However, as we're dealing with time, which is a positive scalar quantity, we take the positive value, okay? So we now have the time of flight, t is equal to 0 0.2 seconds, which we can substitute back into the equation for horizontal motion. And therefore, s is equal to 10 multiplied by 0 0.2, and multiplying these, we find that the range of motion, in other words, the horizontal distance from the point where the ball was thrown to the target is equal to two meters, okay? Okay, let's have a look at the next part of the question. So in this part of the question, we're told that the boy throws the ball again with the same speed and at the same distance from the target. Work out the possible angles above the horizontal the boy could throw the ball so that it passes through the hole. Okay, so this time I've drawn a diagram which shows the path of the particle in projectile motion. But this time the particle lands inside the hole. We've been told that the ball is thrown at the same distance from the target. So as the distance doesn't change, I've just labeled the distance as two meters as we found in the previous question and we still have an acceleration acting downwards due to gravity of 10 meters per second per second. So they're told that the boy throws the ball again with the same speed of 10 meters per second. And we've been asked to calculate the possible angles above the horizontal that the ball could have been projected in order for it to land in the hole. So we can show the initial projection of the particle by adding this initial velocity vector to the diagram, which shows a particle which is being projected with a speed of 10 meters per second at an angle to the horizontal, which we've just called theta. So considering the speed of the particle, the distance between the initial point of projection and the hole, we need to find the different values of theta that would get this particle in the hole. And this can be done by considering both the horizontal and vertical motion of the particle. Now, in order to do this, we need to work out the horizontal and vertical component of this vector. Now, working out the horizontal component of initial velocity, since this vector contains the angle, we've seen in previous tutorials that it would be equal to the vector multiplied by cosine of the angle. So the horizontal component of velocity is equal to 10 cosine theta and the vertical component of velocity, since it doesn't contain the angle, would therefore be equal to 10 sine of theta. Okay, so now we have a better picture. In other words, each vector has been illustrated as either a horizontal or vertical component. But we can now start to resolve the vectors. So resolving in the horizontal direction, taking rightwards to be positive and using the equation S is equal to UT, the equation for horizontal motion, well, we know that S, the horizontal displacement, is equal to two meters. From the diagram, the initial velocity in the horizontal direction is equal to 10 cosine of theta. Now, in this case, we don't know T, the time of flight. 
and we can't assume that it's the same T that we found in the previous question. Because since the ball was thrown at an angle above the horizontal, well it means we now have two components of velocity as opposed to the previous question where we had only one component of velocity which was in the horizontal direction. So we now have to also consider the vertical component of velocity, which means that the initial speed of the particle has changed. So if the speed of the particle has changed and the distance hasn't changed, then we have to assume that the time of flight has also changed. So for now, let's just call t equal to big T, the time of flight. Now, considering the vertical motion of this particle where we take upwards to be positive, let's try and build up a SUVAT equation. Now what's S? Well, since we modeled the particle to land in the hole, which is at the same level as the ball, the path of this particle in the vertical sense would go straight up from the starting point and then come straight back down to where it started. And therefore, the vertical displacement vector is equal to zero. The diagram helps us to see that the initial velocity in the vertical sense would be equal to 10 sine theta and the acceleration due to gravity would remain as negative 10 meters per second per second. Okay, now we found different quantities in both the horizontal and vertical motion, but we need to find the angle theta. Now, one of the ways we can do this is by finding a way to express t, the time of flight, in terms of theta. Now, since t is the same for both the horizontal motion and the vertical motion, it means that we can use the same t here. So using equation one, we can rearrange the equation to get that t is equal to two over 10 cosine theta. And so now we can use the same t here. So now we can build a SUVAT equation by using the equation s is equal to ut plus half a t squared. Because we have s, we have u, we have a, and we now have an expression for t. So by substituting these values into equation two, we get the following equation. Zero is equal to 10 sine theta times two over 10 cosine theta plus a half times negative 10 times two over 10 cosine theta all squared. So here we now have one equation and one unknown, which in this case is theta to be found. So simplifying the right hand side of this equation, we get that zero is equal to two tan of theta minus one over five cosine squared theta. Now I don't quite have enough space to show the working for how it's been simplified, but looking at this part of the expression, should be able to see that the tens would cancel from our trigonometric identities, sine of theta over cosine of theta is equivalent to tan of theta and multiplying by this two here is where we get this two tan of theta. Looking at this part of the expression, if we evaluate all the constant terms inside the bracket, raising two over 10 to the square power and then multiplying by these terms, we would get negative one over five. And then we multiply this by one over cosine squared theta, which we get from squaring this bracket. Now you should remember from your trigonometric reciprocal functions that one over cosine squared theta is equivalent to sec squared theta, and therefore zero is equal to two tan of theta minus one over five sec squared theta. You could then multiply both sides of the equation by five to get that zero is equal to 10 tan of theta minus sec squared theta. Now we can get an equation of like terms by using the following trigonometric identity. One plus tan squared theta is equivalent to sec squared theta. So by substituting one plus tan squared theta in place of sec squared theta, we get zero is equal to 10 tan of theta minus one minus tan squared theta. Now you have to be careful of this negative sign, which needs to be multiplied by both one and tan squared theta when we substitute it. Okay, so we now have an equation in terms of tan theta. Okay, now rearranging this equation, we get that tan squared theta minus 10 tan theta plus one is equal to zero. 
So we can solve this equation by recognizing that this is also a quadratic equation. So if we let x equal to tan of theta, we can then solve this quadratic equation x squared minus 10x plus 1 is equal to 0 by either using the quadratic formula or you can use the polynomial function in your calculator. So solving this we get that x is equal to 5 plus 2 root 6 or x is equal to 5 minus 2 root 6. So since we set x to be equal to tan of theta we have to replace the x with tan of theta to then solve the trigonometric equation tan of theta is equal to 5 plus or minus 2 root 6 which is a trigonometric equation that we can solve by taking the inverse tan of both values. So for the first angle we get that theta is equal to tan inverse of 5 plus 2 root 6 which is equal to 84.2 degrees to three significant figures and for the other angle by doing tan inverse of 5 minus 2 root 6 we get that theta is equal to 5.77 degrees to three significant figures okay so since we've just solved a trigonometric equation and there are several possible solutions i would always recommend that you go through a mental check to assess whether your answers are valid now by looking at the diagram and understanding the path of motion you should be able to come to the conclusion that the angle should be between 0 and 90 degrees. And our angles are indeed between 0 and 90 degrees. And so these are the possible angles above the horizontal that the boy could throw the ball such that it passes through the hole. Okay, so I hope that was useful for you. Keep up the good work and I will see you in the next tutorial. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. Leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.